Hey everybody, thank you for joining us for this midweek program today here at the J.C. Ralston Arboretum. As you can see, we are sitting inside, which is unfortunate because it's raining today. What can you do? As you saw, we had a beautiful Prunus Mume bridal veil blooming its little head off outside. That's where I would have preferred to have been set up today, but what can you do? It's all going to be okay. Today we've got a beautiful program lined up for you. We're going to be doing garden conversations. We've got our new director of horticulture, Greg, here to sit down and talk with us about the plans we've got for the J.C. Ralston coming up in the near future. If you've been to the gardens recently, you may have noticed a large section of the garden has gone missing and we are planning on renovating that. And that's what we're going to discuss today, what our plans are for that. So Mark and Greg will discuss the plans. They'll show you some slides about what we've got going on. And then at the end of the program, we will have a nice little Q&A and y'all will have the option to unmute yourselves and ask the questions verbally if you need to you know, get a little bit of a conversation going to make sure all of the information is, is exchanged properly. Or if you just want, you can ask the question in the chat and I will relay the question to them on your behalf. Uh, please be mindful of whether or not you have your microphone muted or you are sharing your video screen. Um, yeah. And so with that, I think we can kick things over to Mark and Greg and get st started with our garden conversations for today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, this is fun. This is actually yeah, Greg's learning what, what all we're, we're doing um, so that he can actually, you know, Help, help do it. No, um, it's been fun. We've been scrolling back and forth on the our uh, the participant list, and it's it's um, it's pretty fun. We're seeing longtime supporters and volunteers of the Arboretum, former directors of the Arboretum. Hey, Bob Lyons. Hey, Bob Lyons. Um, seeing uh, our our longtime Zoom participants. Hey, Sally, out in Seal Rock, Oregon, uh, and. <laughs> Colleagues uh, that uh, of of Greg and I um, and other uh, botanic garden uh, professionals who are on here, I think they're just here to to rib uh, Greg a little bit. So, Probably, uh, hey Pat Kalina, <laughs> Phil, and yeah, a whole whole group of people. But it's uh, it's because people love what what happens here at the Arboretum and and want to know, you know, what's what's what is happening, um, and there's a lot going on. So for those of you here in central North Carolina, um, you may be wondering about all this rain that we've been having. Uh, we are to blame for it. Absolutely. Uh, it is absolutely uh, uh, our, uh, our fault. Uh, we got the fog, friends of Greg here <laughs> online. Um, and we're gonna jump right into it. So. Uh, Blake mentioned the uh, the big mound of soil you may have seen, the um, uh, clearing of, what, do, you, do you know, it was 80, 90, 100 it was trees over, and shrubs? Over 90 trees and shrubs. Um, you know, we like to refer to it as editing. Um, and it's a part of the Arboretum uh, many years ago, probably over 20 years ago, the first time I came here. We were getting oriented and asked where some things were. And me being me, I wanted to see magnolias. And I was told, don't go down in that part of the Arboretum. Um, this was pre-U. Oh. And um, that's the first place we went, of course. And that is the, the area of, of mass destruction and, and mud and, um, and grading and, and concentration right now that, that Mark is referring to. Yeah, so... Um this is uh, this is what um, what he's talking about. Look, it was nice and dry for a couple days when we were um, when we were uh, bringing uh, soil in, um, you know, and we have uh, created quite. Um, that, did I share that? I can't, I can't even tell. Let me try again. Um, We've got a bunch of individual images here. Uh, what is, it looks, I, I think it's, it's about um, 3,000 cubic uh, yards of soil. That was uh, kind of pacing off, but you know, this is 12 plus feet tall. 
uh, in the middle of, of the, the Arboretum. Literally. <laughs> Literally. Uh, and someone, I don't even know who, it just appeared one day, uh, all of a sudden, uh, this, is, uh, this is what popped up uh, on there. You got that? Yeah, Mount Ralston. We label everything. We pride ourselves on labeling <laughs> our plants, so um, Mount Ralston. Uh, not to, to make a mountain out of a molehill, but we are gonna move it. And um, we are moving the mountain. We've already started, and of course, immediately it started raining and uh, making it a little bit harder uh, to move. So maybe Greg can talk a little bit about kind of the, um, the big uh, plan that we have um, orient people perhaps sure um, stepping back just to the to the soil actually um, you know that's usually a loose term when you're doing projects like this is you hope for for good soil um, when you're doing any kind of construction and gardens in, in particular and um, beggars can't be choosers uh, we, we weren't going to purchase it and with a lot of the the, the work that's being done on on campus um, as most colleges, campuses, things are expanding drastically uh, here and in lots of places. Um, Mark was lucky to, to, to get offered some soil. And uh, with a little bit of reservations, he said, bring it. And we had fingers crossed that it would actually be something we could work with. And it actually turned out to be really good soil. So we really lucked out. And um, as, as luck- it's, but it's the beauty of an ag tech school. It was right. at one point, Goats and chickens were there. Uh, chickens were, were there. Although so. the contractor did say, you sure you want this? Because we have some beautiful, beautiful red dirt. red clay. And you can really <laughs> compact that and get it right, right exactly how you want it. Right. Mm. So, uh, and also as luck would have it, you know, Mark said, yes, we'd like to have it. And they called the next day and said, we're going to start running loads all day tomorrow. So we had to scramble to, to, to find a place to, to put it to stage it, get some help from our um, horticulture uh, field lab support guys who've been fantastic to work with, with uh, their equipment and their time and and their advice. And uh, in earnest, uh, they started dumping soil like crazy. That that was Greg's first week that that phone call came in (laughs) about bringing it out tomorrow. uh, My second or third day, I think. So baptism by fire, um, it speaks to our relationship. We've known each other for a long time, so. Um, he kind of warned me coming in uh, via text and, and through phone calls, so uh, I, I was well prepared and well versed in, in those sorts of things happening. So uh, we got the soil and, and uh, true to form, it, it started to rain. Uh, Christmas came along. Um, we're getting lots of raised eyebrows from colleagues and folks here. How long is it going to be there? We need that site to stage school groups. Um, and also it's in the middle of the garden. And did we mention it's in the middle of the garden? So um, we have slowly started moving it. We've done some grading. We've got a fantastic group of volunteers that is, uh, is our design committee. And we had a graduate student um, for, for her project um, submit drawings and, and some great ideas. And uh, now that we've done, uh, you know, the, the heavy lifting, um, and tomorrow we were supposed to go out and mark beds, but I'm not sure if that'll happen with all this rain, but with all those resources, um, you know, it, it truly takes a, a village uh, to get those things, things going. Um, we've done some initial grading. Uh, we've, we've flagged and, and measured fence lines so we can do paths, but that's kind of the, the big picture with, with, with the soil. And from there, looking well, at some yeah, of the, here, the, the pictures, we'll do the we'll do a, a some of the the prep work. We'll we'll see. So there's Barrel Road, um, and that literally you could not see the fence because of the plant material. Those of you who have not been in that part of the property, um, you couldn't see that corner at all, and. Um, Thank you, uh, the, the, the Raleigh Office of Bartlett Tree Experts. They came out and, and uh, made hay in a very short uh, span of time, I think two days. Yeah, They pretty much had everything cut down, cleaned up. Um, a local stump grinder came in and in two days cleaned all that mess up. And then we, we staged soil uh, last week 
And uh, that's that's a live shot that was that was taken that was taken today. Yes. Um, but you can see it's it's a uh, it's blank canvas. Um, it's going to give us the opportunity um, to put some elevation in uh, a place where there is no elevation, and also give us the opportunity to take advantage of our our hardworking greenhouse folks who uh, have very gifted green thumbs and our, our cup runneth over with, with plant material and, and diversity. So taking a, taking a spot that um, had been well used, had been well utilized, things that were there had been evaluated and getting a chance to, you know, you don't get many chances in gardens to, to get to, to, to have a clean slate and do some fresh things. So it's, it's exciting to be a, be a part of that in a place like the Ralston that has the history so that we can put new things out there and look at them and evaluate them and, and come up with some, some, some good combinations of things. And, you know, one of my big, big things is winter, spring, summer, fall interest. Um, and, and, and Mark and I are on the same page, too, of upping the diversity of, of what we have and, and you know, one of my evil goals coming here and from my background is to make this part of North Carolina, you know, the, 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 the Southern Horticulture Center, like the Delaware Valley is, uh, homage to my, my folks up there at Chanticleer and Longwood and, and Swarthmore. We've got Duke, we've got Chapel Hill, we've got so many great places here. And this gives us an opportunity to, to up our, an already incredible diverse uh, collection of, of plants. Um, it, it gives us room to, to kind of stretch out and, and do that stuff. Yeah. And we've got a bunch of them, in, you know, you can only plant so many trees if you don't take any out. And right. we're not here to have the oldest, biggest, whatever. We like having the first, but we don't yeah. like having the only. Right. As soon as we get one, we like to share it. So right. whatever that may be. Right. So you want to talk a little bit about, you know, this is, so just to orient people, this is Barrel Road. Um, this is this is not the entire arboretum. This is just a piece of it. This is the white garden uh, right in here. So for you real old timers, uh, this used to be the the parking lot um, where you pull in, and this was the old entrance. And there's the brick building was over here. Um, so this is just the northeast quadrant of the corner of the arboretum. The necessary, we're going to talk a little bit about the necessary. It's right here in the main path that bisects the, the arboretum with the perennial border. So this is our really our northeast corner um, that we're talking about. So uh, just to, to orient everybody, you can keep going with what, what's yeah. happening. Yeah. So you know we wanted to do something. A little bit different. Um, there's a lot of gravel garden stuff being done now, um, a lot of crevice garden stuff being done, and Mark kind of had the idea of, of doing these berms, which gives you a little bit of height and different visual aspects to, to plant things on, big and small, let things weep down, let things go up, and also kind of uh, passive aggressively block some of the, the sound from uh, Barrel Road and uh, 440, which, which isn't too far away, and all the construction that's going on on there. That is 440, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Being, being new to the area, I'm, I'm sorting out all that, uh, that horrible construction out, uh, that right out the road from us. Um, you know, kind of, kind of fixing those things, but also providing paths and you know, experiences as you kind of walk through those areas and, and little discoveries. Um, we're going to have a series of paths through, but paths behind the berms and <clears throat> hopefully even where you can get up on some to have a, a different vantage point and, and take advantage of some of that different plant material that we have too. Um, there's even some, there's going to be a fountain down at the end, which will help with that, with the sound and also give you kind of a, a reflective place to go in a far corner of the property. So taking kind of that, uh, you know, neglected is the wrong word, but taking that corner that used to just kind of be full of, of plants and having it be kind of a destination to go when, when you come and, and see not just the new things, but having those experiences as you kind of go along the way and, and wind through those those paths and those different areas. I don't know if neglected is not the right word for it. And the fountain, the fountain is really neat. Now this is, this is we don't have the funds right on hand for this. If anybody would like to consider it, <laughs> please talk to me. Um, but this is, this is what started the students project. Right. We knew, 
um, you know, I was looking back at some notes from years ago that we wanted a water feature in this area. We need somebody, something to, to anchor it and really draw people right. down. And one nice thing about a water feature is it gives an open space where you can see plants and things. You know, we're, we sometimes get so plant focused that we plant without really, how do you appreciate them? How do you evaluate them? And open turf, open water, spaces like that give you that, yep. but it also makes for a destination. And we had always looked at this far corner for um, that uh, water feature. And we were really actually getting down to, to thinking about some designs, and we were thinking fairly traditional pond design. And we happened to get a call about um, from one of the uh, design professors here at State and, and said, you know, I've got this student, She's looking to get this grant, but part of the grant um, through the American Public Gardens Association is that you, there needs to be work with a public garden. What do you think? And, and she explained a little bit, and I'm like, this is perfect. We want her to join our committee. And what she's working with is actually swimming pools, but it's using plants. And we know plants clean water, you know, that's, we know that. But actually using plants to clean public swimming pools. So these are not super controlled little, you know, your backyard little lap pool or something. This is really using plants so that you're not putting chlorine and chemicals and all these things in. Not exactly what we're doing, but this, um, her design really takes those plant, you know, takes that concept, puts some plants in the middle and we're looking at, you know, a fountain going out over it. So not a lot of water that is actually being cleaned here, but it gives us an opportunity to really talk about what the plants do and how they do. And it's a pretty big space. We're looking at a 15 foot um, planted uh, uh, space for that, that fountain and a, a 30 foot um, kind of plaza around it with a nice wall and, and seats there. And actually from that, we still want to do more of a pond because um, we, we want to deal with some water issues that we have from the necessary. And, but I loved this really strong round area. And so we kind of, instead of a more natural pond, kind of started thinking about, and this is all future. This is, you know, when we get past the burbs, we're starting a little bit farther down, you know, looking farther down. But these, you know, really round, and I even look at, you know, where you make these decisions and paths. Do we make this a, a really strong circle you know, kind of gathering spot, place to talk um, with with groups and and you know, or whether they're summer camps or they're college groups or they're you know, visiting folks from Plant Propagator Society right. or Magnolia Society, um, but using kind of keeping that that really strong circle and using that as a design piece for this whole area. But one of the things you know, we're talking about these burn, you know, we're looking at this having a wall with a, a real high berm around it. Let me, um, this is a there it is. design concept. Y'all seeing this or do I need to reshare? Yeah, okay. So this is just kind of a real sketch kind of thing, but you know, it kind of gives you the sense that it'll be this kind of enclosed spot. Not so much an area that with, with that big pond where we can do big programs there, but it is an area where you can get in and it can be intimate or not quite as, as intimate uh, with that 30 foot space. But it also gives you a, an opportunity to, to um, kind of sit and relax. And I know all of you who join our Zoom regularly will be disappointed not to hear <laughs> the 310 uh, train come by every time, but uh, hopefully we will get rid of a bit of that. But you know, we're looking at, you know, to scale. If that's somebody standing there or sitting there, and this is the top of this wall, that gives you a sense of when we're talking about berms, we're talking about some 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 real height to them. Yeah. Um, not three foot berms, but six and eight foot berms. Um, I don't know if people have started have asked questions about this project in particular, and if so, we'll we'll answer some of those now because that is the most imminent project is is the um okay um somebody asked well somebody asked are we going to need to raise the fence go ahead um those of you that have visited know that there is some new fence further up the property at our entrance and the the plan has always been to continue that all the way down the road and this gives that a little more renewed uh priority to to, to make that happen so um 
I don't think it's going to be much higher, but it's going to mirror image what's at the, the entrance so that that's all kind of concentric and, and, and looks better and ties it in so that it all looks the same. Um, I've, I've never been a fan of that, that chain link fence. Um, it's not very inviting. Um, you know, it's, it's pretty ugly to be, to be blunt. So it'll be, it'll be nice when that, when that comes out again, those are, those are future things, but I think that'll move that up a, a, a notch with, with the, the powers that be to, to kind of make that happen. And it'll really change the whole look as you're, cause for me, when I come down the, the barrel road, I start looking immediately cause that's where the arboretum starts. And with a nice fence there, new plantings, berms, and all that, it's really going to change the, the the face of what the garden looks like. It's going to change your perception, especially if you've never been before. As you come in, you you come in and you park at the entrance. You go to the visitor center. Um, it's really going to change the, the that that impression when you when when you when you come in. So that that'll be that'll be different and and new and and look much better. There'll be paths that go behind, so they'll be in concert and closer to that fence. So it's going to completely change the, the the look of that. So it's it's going to go bye bye. Yeah, and that's why we wouldn't have to raise the fence, is because right. the berm won't be on the fence line. No. It's far enough back that you can walk so that we can do passage. maintenance um, on those right. sides. So it'll be in, but you know, JC had planted all, you know, 20 plus years ago, Screens. hedging plants, he yeah. trenching plants evaluation. I mean, it was intentionally screened. And now with this, it gives us a real opportunity to, to really highlight some views and vistas as we get that, that fence changed over. So not only will it just be beautiful because it's garden, but there'll be some, you know, some points that, Really, you know, whether that's a, you know, a, a gorgeous Japanese maple that's really pune, pruned beautifully, you know, uh, you know, or, you know, uh, bridal veil, prunus mume, like we were looking at before this, or, but something that'll really, that'll really pop people as they walk or drive by. Much more attention getting than what was there, but there previously. Yeah. Um, okay. But it, Awesome. Mary Ann's asking, how are you going to handle the drainage in this area as it floods regularly, especially if you put up a berm? The initial, that was the work that was done last week in the picture that Mark showed, um, the nice kind of muddy runway is, <clears throat> that whole area was just kind of low and saddled. And we took a big chunk of the soil that we had outside and graded that level. There's some more that we need to do. There's a, there's a low spot where we'll probably have to go a little bit deeper into the garden to alleviate that. There's also plans uh, in the future to maybe do some things like, um, you know, handling some of the water that comes down from the, the necessary, which Mark will talk about in a little bit, but there's gonna have to be some drainage stuff that's done there and a way to kind of channel and control that water, maybe with something like a bio stream or, or something along those lines. I've seen some initial drawings that'll, that'll tie into that, that will handle it responsibly. We'll use plants to help filter and slow water down. Um, which also helps with the diversity and the interest of what's going on. Um, so that'll be that'll be tied into that as well to yeah. handle some of those problems. And if if only there were somebody on this Zoom right now who would have some great advice for us on uh, how to do that. Um, looking at you, Sharon. Shannon. There's a there's a there's a there's a couple there's a couple, and she's she's due she's due for a visit uh, visit also. You promised. So, so yeah, but that's a great point that we do have water issues there and that's the, the necessary is part of that, um, the solution, the, but it's not the entire and probably we'll, we'll need to do some short term rain garden catchments to, to keep water there. But when we're looking farther ahead, you know, kind of the next step is those pond and some bog areas. We've not had really good bog areas to play with some of these right. fantastic plants that we can we can do. And so that will be the, the goal. The goal is always for us to keep water daylighted as much as possible right. or put it in a place where we're going to use it, not run it into storm drains. That's, yeah. um, That's we really we don't want that. So ultimately, the ultimate goal is to use that space to be able to talk about water and how you use pl plants in built landscapes to solve those problems. Yeah, it's, it's, we've always been a, 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 a plant collector's garden and over the years, 
Um, we've you know, added to the visitor experience and education is an important part of what we do. So all those things are factored into, into this and, and, and pretty much anything that we're, we're yeah. doing uh, inside and, and outside the garden. And we love killing plants. So, <laughs> you know, we're not afraid to put plants in where we're going to kill them. So yeah. it's not just anybody can show you a, a rain garden or a bio swale or something like that. We'll throw plants in that we doubt are going to live and then be, you know, when they do survive, Happily if they surprised, do, yes. then, it, then it diversifies the palate. So yeah. it's it's still that same goal of the Arboretum to evaluate plants, to diversify the American landscape, as JC said, but looking more and more at the urban built landscape as the landscape that needs diversity and plants the most. And if we can have a broader palette, A plus. And, and living examples right out the doors here that we can we can show people. It's something that we preach when we're traveling and, and visiting colleagues and, and, and doing lectures and stuff. and. Uh, it, it's it's something JC would be in, involved with if he were if he were still with us. So it's exciting to get to do that kind of stuff. Agree. Okay. And Sharon asked, will you be using native aquatic plants in the water feature? But I, I, you know, I'll, I'll defer some to my director of horticulture. But I would say yes, we will be using <laughs> native plants and non-native plants. We're about built landscapes <laughs> and yes. and plants that work well in built landscapes including plants that behave, yeah. um, you know, and there are plants that we might use in a, you know, a 15 foot contained piece without any way to exit that you might, you wouldn't want to put in a bog garden or, or, or water feature in the woods by a seasonal stream or something like that. But it's, it, you know, it's about, is the plant good for the landscape? Right plant for the right place is, is, is the mantra. And if that's native, non-native, um, it's, it's what, we're, what we're going to embrace and, and look at. And it's, it's all kind of real world stuff too. And we wanna be good stewards and examples of, of what we're doing. And you can accomplish that with, with both, both of those, those pallets of plants. And, and to quote somebody, um, life's, life's too short for, for boring, boring plants. That's so, right. and, and there's a lot of opportunity to use um, natives and, and non-natives in, in concert, and that those things are always on the table. And there are insanely cool native plants that are not, you know, available places, are not easy to come by, you know, it's, but it really is for us, is it a good landscape plant for whatever the landscape we're looking at is. Yeah, and things that people can get if we're showing people things, we, you know, we want there to be some attainability in, in what we're using also. For the most part. That's right. Or we want to get the nurserymen to start growing them so that they are attainable. Right. So it's a chicken egg thing. It's very difficult. Yes. Uh, nurserymen love plants, but they don't love plants that they grow and don't sell. No. <laughs> no. And that looks like that's all the questions about this particular project. All right. We'll move on to another project that is aligned with that. Um, and that's uh, the necessary. So, when I share the screen, it does not change what I see. So I have to figure out which, which I've just shared. Um, I all know the necessary. Uh, we love the necessary. It's, it's a, you know, prime feature of the Arboretum, our focal point. Um, and uh, thanks to one, a very generous donor, um, Carol McNeil, we, the, the, necessary is the necessary at McNeil Corner. And uh, while this has taken a while to get going because of, uh, you know, COVID and things, we are now actually moving forward with a, a renovation and that'll be include a, a roof replacement, um, doing some opening up here and extending this, uh, um, arbor doing this off the other side. Really, when you walk down here, to me, it always looks like this is off center of that main pathway. It's not. It's it's centered, but it feels off center because you have this over here. Um, let me I'll give you a sketch of that that one of our great design members, uh, Suzanne Edney, um, did looking at this. So. Yeah. 
you'll see we won't have patio on both sides, but this will balance it out from a visual standpoint. And, and there's there's some access for us in the back. But um, the other thing I don't I didn't do the the plan view, just the landscape view. But doing away with the steps up front and a somewhat accessible pathway around and really changing that to, to make a real accessible pathway all the way around and in. And, you know, I like the idea wherever possible not to have a, here's the, path, the entrance that you're supposed to go to, like if we did stairs right up the middle and then the, here's somewhere to the side is an accessible path, but to have a way in and that be, you know, welcoming and, and accessible to all. So really have this featured as a, you know, strictly the, the, this piece of art that's building that if those of you who don't know, this was built by students <laughs> in 95, 96 for a, a flower show in Charlotte and then brought here and um, our toilets. And I brought the, the, I cringed when we brought in the, the NC State facilities people and they looked at the inside. I was like, oh God, please don't tell me we got to rebuild. And they, and they were all like mouths open going, good gosh, this thing's going to be here after the concrete McSwain building's gone. That's, um, so it's really it's, external. It's solid. It's external and internal. It's making the bathrooms as, as eco-friendly as possible. We can't do some things because of sewer connections and things that we would like to do, but making them a little bit more warmer, inviting than kind of the um, more institutional that they are inside. The, the bar has been set by our, our colleagues at uh, Chanticleer. Um, they're not known for their, their fancy bathrooms, but they have very fancy, nice, beautiful bathrooms. And th that's, that's the bar for me, is, yeah. is, to, is to attain that level of horticulture perfection. That's right, that's right. And so some of the things around here, um, you know, this is the main border that comes up right down the middle. Um, and this is an area where water does move down and then drains um, to the north and goes down towards where those berms are. And that's something that we'll have to deal with. But one thing we're looking at is, is adding in some permeable paving and actually ideally capturing some water under there that we can use um, for uh, for irrigation, um, for uh, you know that that sort of a thing, and along with that irrigation, what I'd love to do, I'm still figuring out if this is going to be possible, is instead of having just a wall here, making that wall created out of troughs. Um, you know, little tiny plants can get lost, and this is a way to do that and have some fun and change out, and this will give us real good water to use to to water them. Um, and then have more of a garden that you can experience uh, up, uh, up here um, as you go into the, the, the restrooms there. I don't know if there's I think anything else that we should mention with this. I think that kind of covers it. And yep. I think um, I'm really excited about this. Uh, really, really excited. I, I think um, that the necessary is such an iconic piece of the Arboretum. It's one of those things that everybody who's been here remembers. Um, and I love the idea of really focusing, having it be a, even more of a focal point and um, draw your eye, but that is an enhancement to the garden, not as a detraction. Um, it's, it's a functional landmark and yeah. polishing it up to make it that much more aesthetic, balancing it out, it ties into everything else that we're, we're doing in that, that area. Mark and Greg, Suzanne. All right, this is Suzanne, Suzanne, who you're hearing. This is her, yeah. this is her handiwork, this, this sketch. I just wanted to add that the, um, the new arbor on the left will go all the way down. The, the supports will go all the way down to the ground level that's there now. And there will be some sort of hidden steps to go up on that side. Um, and there'll be a right. little patio under there, a, a little area to sit. And, um, you know, it's it's just going to be a, another little experience to look down the hill into the the new um, the new water feature that goes down the hill from the necessary. Yeah. 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 And, the, so and she's the, talking about this area where we add on. This is behind this wall. 
you know, on this, on the, the right side here, the, the posts come down to the level of the bathroom. So right along here, this side, it'll be it's a pretty good three drop. plus feet lower yeah. down. So these posts will go all the way down to the ground. So from front visually, it'll look, it'll look balanced, but over here, this will, this um, arbor will actually be, you know, a good three feet taller when you're standing under there. And yeah, we'll make that access mm -hmm. a little better, both for us, but also make it in, probably make it into a little um, quiet seating area that somebody can come in and, and just kind of, commune with nature another i know i know there's uh, on that side is what is it about four feet or five foot deep um storage storage right. underneath there mm -hmm. and um i was thinking it i mean this is just something that i was thinking about a place just opening that whole storage area up as high as the existing door as a, as a place to get out of the rain or, you know, just a little kind of porch like thing in there. All, so all right, Suzanne, this is, this is not our design committee. <laughs> That's tomorrow. I appreciate tomorrow. thought tomorrow. Let's talk about I that. I, and uh, I was, I was, like zip, I was zipping my brain up and I thought, mm, should I mention I know. <laughs> I will say, I did want to mention this is that, um, <laughs> You know, if there are folks on here who are landscape architects, designers, super creative people, and you want to talk to us about being part of our design committee, um, we'd love that. We always love having uh, new people in and getting new ideas, whether that's short term or, or long term. Um, we, we'd love that. So I'll throw that out there. Thank um, you. Yeah. See you okay. See you tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. See you tomorrow. Bring your galoshes. Bring your mud boots. Uh, one more, uh, one more piece uh, to to share. A couple photos with this, and then we'll start answering more questions. So you may have, um, hopefully, if you've been out, you've seen this uh, new arbor entrance to the White Garden. Really, kind of where this was just kind of an opening that appeared. You know, as you're walking down, this really kind of this really, you know made it an entrance. Still have some planting to do around it and, and fixing it up, but um, it really, when we put that in, it kind of highlighted uh, the um, old entrance. And those old timers may remember this was the second entrance into the Arboretum, uh, the revamped entrance into the Arboretum from 20, 30 years ago. And this is getting old and tired and a little outdated. And so um, we are going to be replacing that. We've got a very generous gift um, from the Lundy Fetterman um, Family Foundation to replace this entrance. And so we'll use, while the new uh, entrance on the, the south side took into kind of, took cues from this entrance, now this um, Western entrance, as we redo that, will take inspiration from the new one. And we don't have it designed yet, um, but once we do, uh, we will we will have that installed. Um, I know our uh, events and rental coordinator is on here, and she's furiously scribbling a note down to say, make sure they don't do this during wedding season. So um, any work around here will be either in the height of the hot part of summer or after um, weddings are, are more or less through in the, in the fall, uh, which gives us a little bit more time to, to, to plan. But, you know, that's part of the public garden. You're always planning around yes. events and rentals and things. Yes, with piles of dirt and, and dirty old arbors. You never know. That's right. She is trusting us to get rid of that pile of dirt. And I will just say while I'm at it, that if anybody really loves what we're doing there and wants to um, you know, help us think through what a replacement for this kind of off the shelf um, gazebo might be and how we might get the funds to build it, uh, that will be in the White Garden, one of the next on the list, so.
It's a good opportunity for another signature signature thing in the garden, like the necessary, something that's unique to, to us or our area or, or something. You know, does not need to be NC State break. No. <laughs> Although that's good in some situations. That's right. So, take, do we have more questions oh, about got, any of those? Yeah, we got some questions. Um, first, somebody asked about uh, about if there were any plans for parking expansion in light of all the construction that's going on with the Blue Ridge Road and Hillsboro stuff. So, yes and no, in that there are thoughts in, th in my head and things, I, emails I have sent that have not been followed up on. You know, we're, the expansion of 440, there's a, they've cleared and extended that overpass. And, you know, it seems to me that that would be a perfect place for overflow parking. It would not be right at the Arboretum. It'd still be a bit of a walk, but um, it would be, it would be great. There's some space right across from the Arboretum entrance that is some of it partly privately owned and partly railroad owned that is, I would like to get in there and see if we could have that for some overflow parking. It's tricky working with the railroad. Um, mm -hmm. It's even more tricky working with the university's person who works with the railroad. Actually, the railroad's been pretty easy every time I've worked with them. It's the university sometimes gets in there. So we're, we're, it's definitely something we think about and need um, for sure. Okay, um, going back real quick, somebody asked a quick question about the, the water feature and stuff. They asked uh, the wall in the water garden circle, will it have water flowing down into a splash pan? No, the, the exterior we're looking at using the, I forget what the technique's called, but the Japanese um, technique where you, you char wood um, really keeps it from, from breaking down and rotting. So no, that'll be a wall and, and benches under it. The, the planting will be in a raised uh, uh, pond, container, whatever, uh, you know, 15 foot, but it'll be, you know, three feet or so, so people can kind of interact with it at their level. And then that'll go over and kind of a, an infinity kind of mm. into a, a grate around the bottom. No, there won't be any pool, um, so to speak. Okay, cool. Uh, so with regards to all the projects with the necessary, what's the timeline look like on that? Tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so the necessary timeline is um, we, in-house, in we need to make some decisions about materials um, for the interior especially. Uh, the the NC State facilities, they kind of sat on it for a long time, and then when they moved forward, boom, they had us estimates and, and things, but our options were this or that, you know, pile the whole thing or do do this other um, imitation wood thing. And we, we as a staff, said, whoa, hold that. We, we really want these to be something a little bit different. We don't, we don't need to go way off the edge with the interiors, you know. We don't want to confuse people when they go into a bathroom about what it is, but we want materials that speak to and, and design that speaks to us. So that for the interior, it's kind of, it's waiting on us now. And then the exterior, we're waiting to get some um, good estimates for the roof. Uh, we, in an ideal world, we'll do a copper roof if we can make that happen um, in the way that we want it. Um, and so it's really, once those, we get things nailed down, that will, that'll happen pretty quickly once everything's nailed down. The things that wait on us, you know, if we had 10 more people on staff, we'd be ready to go next week. Um, but it's, it's all juggling, but we really want it to, to get going pretty quickly. I don't, at this point, I don't see it happening pre-spring. Um, it's, it's actually moving faster than I anticipated. Um, Mark went to Costa Rica on that trip. I've, I've talked to a few people since then and actually emailed, there was an email exchange today 
with someone who's helping with some of the design and picking out and, and guiding that through the, the university system so that it is something less generic and a little more signature. So that's, that, that feels good and, um, and, and positive. And she is just waiting to hear back from some of her colleagues. And, you know, and then there's the whole supply chain and finding the right things and all that, all that that entails. Anybody that's done any work on their home or anything knows what, what, what that's like. So, you know, the sinks, the fixtures, all that sort of stuff. But it, it's, it's moving, which is good. And that's, that's a positive thing is to think of it in, in that regards and, um, and getting the, the support and, and input from uh, the university folks. Um, it, it's, it's, it's all new to me, but it, it's been a surprise that it's, it's, it's moving in a, in a positive direction, I, I think, I feel like. Yeah, yeah. And then the exterior is gonna be a, a separate project um, in terms of how the university, university works, but. Um, sure. And I hope we do get that copper roof because just imagining the kind of patina that'll build up on it, that'll be, It'll be beautiful. beautiful. Mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, some quick questions about the necessary. Will it be handicap accessible? Will there be lights outside? And will there be a drinking fountain? Ah, ah great. Yeah, so we are converting all of our existing drinking fountains into bottle filler drinking fountains and one is being added to the necessary. That is part of this project, so I'm glad that was brought up. Um, and for those of you who come and get plastic bottles of water here for a donation, get yourself a reusable bottle because we're doing away with that um, as soon as we get these bottle fillers in. Uh, so that's part of it, yes, it is gonna be handicap accessible. It's one of the tricky things. We're gonna get the ramp up that's accessible, but the existing pavers, there's a inch or so lit between them and the actual bathrooms. We were hoping to be able to add more bathroom, more you know, uh, uh, toilet spaces in there, but we can't be just because of the size of what we have in terms of handicap accessibility. Um, we're not able to do that. We will also, and in all of our bathrooms, all of our public bathrooms, have changing tables. Um, they're out here, aren't they're, they? They're, they're, see them out in the they're, hall? They're sitting out in the hall here, so as <laughs> soon as they, they facilities gets them in, they'll be in, so. Okay, somebody was asking what sort of material will be used on the paths around the berm, and that was related to another concern somebody else had, and they were talking about, uh, it looks like we're going from a lot of green to gray infrastructure, and they were wondering if there are ways we intended to integrate plants into this, or with ground covers, or overarching tree limbs. I mean, it looks, it looks pretty barren now compared to what it was in the, in the past. Um, you know, I, to, there's a lot of good vistas that you see coming up the road now, but you know, like this tree out back <clears throat> that was planted in 2006, mm -hmm. things grow fast here. So we're gonna load up plants in there to, to no end. And all those different layers and levels, um, you know, winter, spring, summer, fall, bulbs, perennials, grasses, um, things for the drainage, uh, you know, it, it's hard to, to look at that now and think about that happening, but with any kind of garden renovation, redo, design, those, those things will come um, with, with a little bit of patience and, and, and time. Um, I'm not sure what the path material is gonna, gonna be or, or, or uh, entail. Um, I don't know if it's gonna be you know, a hardscape or if it's gonna be a gravel or a grit. I don't think we've gotten there quite yet, but all those things will be, will be taken into consideration. Um, you know, we want it to be unique. We want it to be sign uh, signature to, to hear, and we want it to be interesting too. So um, those those things are are to be de determined and and taken advantage of our, um, our our wonderful volunteers that have been helping with the design stuff. Um, we're gonna we're gonna use all of those great ideas and, and and tremendous brain power and come up with something really. I mean, it already is something really really cool, but those details are really gonna make it nice and make it signature to, to us. And that's that's the fun part in, in, in this kind of stuff is paying attention to that, those sorts of things. Yeah, and, and I, we're not paving the Arboretum. 
No. It's actually quite the opposite. We're increasing planting space and we're making, we're going to make paths that are usable. And path, the path materials may change over time. We certainly are putting in more hard skate pathways and that's because we want to be one of, one of our, from the 2006, seven, um, you know, master plan that we're kind of, we're currently still updating and working from one of the, the major um, goals was to make the garden more accessible. And that's not, I always repeat, it's not just wheelchairs, it's strollers, it's people with a cane, it's just people who are a little bit unsteady. Um, so uh, that's important. But, but, you know, when you start a big project, it, it might be a mulch path um, for a Initially. while, and that may that may go to we may try some different, you know, are there some ground covers that will tolerate real um, foot traffic? Uh, you know, are there permeable things we want? You know, it's those are all things to to play with over time, and and so I don't I, I see that as part of of what we do and and who we are, and some things are going to be more accessible than others and you know but that's also part of what we want to kind of experience and try as well okay and it looks like most of the questions have been addressed but there were a couple of suggestions that i'd oh, like to relate to you great. real quick marianne said in addition to being able to see a japanese maple from wherever you stand in the garden can we also make it so that you can see a bench from wherever you stand in the garden <laughs> <laughs> well yeah we love benches um <laughs> They're they're incredible. We're we're a lot of our benches have been aging out in recent years. Um, we've been replacing them. Um, we've we've got some stone benches uh, that are real pieces of art um, that that we're doing. There's some a uh, uh, friend of uh, Greg and I who has some amazing wood in a wood shop that we're we're going to get up there and visit with him at some point and um, talk about uh, you know some of this this phenomenal wood how we can use that on some benches and so yes benches are great but benches are uh, they are honestly a difficult expense for us um, in terms of all the things we need so so benches are more or less come in as we get. Um, as people purchase them as uh, memorial or, or um, you know, to show appreciation for somebody, doesn't have not it does not have to be somebody who's passed away, or it could just be you know, I want a bench here. I, I want a bench here. Yeah, yeah, um, and that's you know that's that's really where where we are. But a lot of what we're doing, we are thinking about where where is a good place to stop and rest. Uh, that'll be you know, not facing directly into the sun for most of the year and that sort of thing. <laughs> okay. There's actually benches coming tomorrow, I think. Ooh. Um, two, two new benches are coming tomorrow. Well, that's exciting. Um, and Penelope had one more suggestion that I like. She says shelves in the bathrooms would be a helpful place to place gloves when we volunteers use it and for brides, et cetera, for when they need to prepare to be photographed and stuff rather than just putting it all in the sink. She is not Gen <laughs> ZX whatever, because when as soon as you said shelf, I went to the my <laughs> cell phone. Right. <laughs> that so, that actually has been discussed, is is that sort of thing. Um, is is a sink that's that's not only functional, but you can you can do that, that sort of stuff. So that's a good point. Point taken. We're we're looking at that sort of stuff too. Anything to make our uh, our volunteers' hey, lives easier. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think that's all that all the time we have for today. So thank you so much, Mark and Greg, for running us through these plans and relieving some of our concerns about what's going on with the arboretum. I know I'm excited about it, and we still got a lot of people here in the chat with us, so they seem pretty excited too. Um, thank you everybody for joining us for this program. We hope you'll join us next week for our midweek program. Seeing that it'll be the 1st of February, we'll be doing God. February gardening tasks with Tim and Sophia. So that'll be a lot of fun. I hope you all join us for that. We'll see you all next week. Take care. <laughs>